Oh my god, that is amazing. Hello my friends and how are you doing? Today I'm adding a new format to my channel. Let me know in the comments what you think. It's called OMG AI News. The way this works is that I show you the best and most amazing thing that I found about new developments in the AI landscape. Now, because I can't know everything, use the comments to give me feedback, maybe correct stuff that I said wrong or show me what you think about all of that and I will pick the best comments and react to them or answer questions in the next episode of OMG AI News. Also, this gives me more ability to add flavor and flair to show you my opinion and outlook on the developments in the AI world. Let's get started. So the first thing I want to show you is the Whisk project by Google. And that is actually pretty cool because it is promptless image generation. The way this works is that you combine multiple images into a new image, giving you a lot of control over the content. And because you have image guidance, so to speak, you have also more control over the colors, over the composition, how everything looks in the end result. You can can of course also use prompts to generate the images you want to use as a source. However, of course, we could already do that with ComfUI. You can build a workflow where you have image to image, you have IP adapter, you have control net, you have image interrogation to create a prompt from an image and like that you can do these combinations already of course especially when you use masking you use blending of the latent space together of the different latents and then render the file and images things we have done even in my live stream i would say half a year maybe even a year ago but let's look at another news from google and that is VO2 or VO2, not quite sure how to pronounce that. It's their newest video model. And this, some people in the community say, is the best model we have seen so far. Some of the reasons for that is the high accuracy that the model has. It can render up to 4K in resolution, which is absolutely insane. And also it has advanced motion control, which is really cool. Now, when we look at these examples that they have on their website, the quality we can see here and the fidelity of the videos is better than anything we have seen so far. Of course, you might think that this is cherry picked and I would agree in that. Of course, they do that for their marketing materials. However, you can find plenty of user generated content on Twitter. Personally, I don't have access to that yet because I'm not in the US and stuff like that gets rolled out in the US first. But from what I can see on Twitter, and this gives a pretty cool comparison, you can see that the quality is absolutely crazy good, really bringing us closer to creating our own movies. And speaking about the comparison of different models here, I want to show you comparisons that have been done by Heather Cooper. And here she compares some of the most beloved and famous video AI models in how they react to a prompt. The interesting thing here is that all of them are actually pretty good, but they seem to stick to different parts of the prompt. They pick out different elements. So for example, when we have here this found footage of an underground tunnel, in some of the videos you can see an actual underground tunnel, while other models stick more to the mention of the forest. So it's pretty interesting that not every model really sticks 100% to the prompt elements all together. Let me know in the comments which of these results you like the most. Now let's go to another news that you should use right now and that is that Midjourney will open up unlimited generation for all their paid tiers, which means that you can buy a $10 tier for one month, set it to the relaxed mode. You can get unlimited image generation and the other tools they have with the editor, the out painting, the in painting. I would absolutely suggest to you that you give that a shot. Another thing that you should absolutely give a shot is the Pika 2.0 unlimited access on their site. This is only good 
until the 22nd. So only two days where you can use their page to the max. And this is a page that is not cheap. And while we are at the video model news, Kling 1.6 has also been released, showing some really promising quality and a lot of improvements like better prompt adherence, more consistency and more dynamic results. They say that the standard and professional models are 195% improved compared to the 1.5 model. I'm not really sure what that means, but it sure sounds pretty impressive. And the video samples you can find from 1.6 are also very mind blowing. So this really is the Christmas of video AI models. Absolutely stunning. And this isn't even everything about video AI. Because Hun Yuan has released an FP8 model, which means that it uses less VRAM to generate these videos. But on top of that, they also have released a fast model, which uses less steps and of course can generate these videos faster because of that. So both of that is really amazing. And here is an even better news. Now we have nodes that support the Hun Yuan model inside of ConfUI. Again, of course, these nodes come from Qi Chai, who already created amazing nodes for the other video models for ConfUI, so you can trust the source. At that point, I want to mention again Project Odyssey. Now, what that is, is that you get free access to many of the best video AI pages out there, so you can generate videos for the Project Odyssey contest. And if you win, there is a prize pool of $70,000. And also the best entry from my community that I pick gets $500. So tag me in the video that you submit to the Project Odyssey contest. Also, if you think about getting professional with your video AI generation, Runway has started the Talent Network. This is a media platform where you can post your creations as a portfolio and companies can find you to hire you for their project. This is a really good starting point to get into the video AI industry and actually make some money, not just spend money on all of your experiments. Next, I want to talk about Flora AI. This is a pretty cool concept that runs on their website. And here you have blocks that are simplified from the nodes from ConfUI. So this is a very different, very simplified concept that opens up new ways to use AI. So on the right side, you can see here, we have a mini map or basically a canvas in which we can move around and you can see all these different nodes in here that also allow you to create really interesting results. Here you have image variations and so on. So you can do a lot of experimentation in here. There's also video generation in here. And on the right side, you can see here basically this kind of palette of sources that you can use, of text you can use, of images, and what you want to do with these images, for example, variations here. Everything here is simplified for the interface so that you don't have to care about what is happening inside of these things. You don't have to care about the complexity. You can just connect them, experiment with them and stay inside of the artistic flow. Of course, this is an online platform and because of that, you have to pay for using their GPU, but it seems like a pretty worthy project and a really nicely designed contender that is not just simplified, but also visually appealing. Personally, I'm a person who likes stuff that looks good and this looks pretty sexy for a UI. Next, let's also talk about Pano Dreamer, which can create from a single image a 3D environment. And that is pretty amazing. And again, it brings us so much closer to generating our own world. 
Next, let's talk about prompt depth anything. Now, this is a new method to create a depth map from LiDAR information, especially cheaper, more affordable LiDARs like, the, for example, from the iPhone. The interesting thing here is instead of creating relative measurement, it creates metric measurement, which means that you have an exact value. For example, that a person is standing three meters exactly from the camera and not just a relative value. It also creates a more consistent depth map. While LiDAR can be pretty rough and have a lot of holes in it, this will create a more consistent depth map from that. And on top of that, it can be used to create 3D models that are more exact from a single source, like for example, an iPhone by moving around and scanning that object in real time with that LiDAR. And that of course is pretty amazing because not only can this be used in things like robotic or in 3D environments in VR and AR for a lot of applications, I think it can also have amazing applications to be used inside of AI video generation. Another thing that fits very well with this news is Project Genesis and they show an amazing showcase. But right now the community is a little bit unclear on what this is actually doing because the description of the project leaves the interpretation a little bit open. Now, personally, my opinion is that this is a physics engine that is guided by AI, not a 3D model generation engine. So the reason why I say that is because what we see as a model, for example, the beer bottle has perfect texture down to the fine print of the text doesn't look at all like it is AI generated. However, of course, the physics of the water drop and how it runs down the bottle, this can be guided by AI when the AI has been trained on different materials, their physics, how they react in the different in the real world and how they react to different situations, maybe different forms of gravity, slowing down time, things like that which can be really, really interesting and also still are super helpful if you already have the 3D environment to create amazing scenes with very accurate physics in them with a lot less render time to calculate all these physics effects. If your hat isn't filled up yet with news, here's one more bit. In the UK, artists and musicians have come together to protest the use of their materials to train AI models. There are big names in there, like for example, Stephen Fry, who are against that and want to have their copyrights protected against the overreach of all of these AI companies, which is understandable on the one side. But on the other side, the argument is that the rest of the world is still going to train on their output, on their artistic creations. And this will put the UK and even the EU at a disadvantage. So it's important to find a middle way, a solution to that problem. All of these news are absolutely mind blowing. I think this was the best Christmas for AI ever. We got so many new things. My mind is blown. Let me know if your mind is blown too. And Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Bye.